Eagle. I'm still a member of Eagle. But um, I used to work here, um, at, like way before any of you were even alive. Um, so, because I've been living in Bosnia now for 18 years, um, so that's a lot longer than your lives have gone on. Um, and so, yeah, but I used to, I was, I used to go to Eagle. Um, I worked here for a while with the missions team. And I also worked with Bosnian refugees who had moved to America to live after their war in their country. Uh, so that's how I got interested in Bosnia, and I ended up in New York. So I was born and raised in Indiana, um, and then I ended up going to college and getting a degree in cross-cultural ministry, and then I have a master's in English as a second language. Um, and so that's how eventually God just really moved my heart for people who were from former communist countries from Muslim backgrounds, and that's how I ended up in Bosnia. So, yeah. so guys, who thinks they know information about Bosnia? I don't know. I've always been there. Well, we're going to test that knowledge, okay? So we have a series of questions. And as you guys can see, there are little pictures around. So you guys see green over there. It's hard to read. But there's green on the wall, there's pink behind you, and there's yellow over here. So each of the questions is going to be a green option, a pink option, or a yellow option. And I need you guys to go to which option you think is correct. All right, so I need everyone to stand up. All right, and let's do the first question. Start All right, uh, Bosnia is located on which continent? Africa? You have to go through London. Europe? Oh, I heard Bosnia. Oh, it's nice. Okay, Which spot? Is it Europe? I'm just going to fall in line. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. You've got to hop Yeah, I'm going to hop through. No, Europe. Oh, you got this. You can do all this. And that's your difference. All right. And the answer is? Hey. Good job. We're really glad that you know. If you go through all this. I don't know anything. I'm just going with my friend. Yes, so. Oh, there. So actually, if you look at this little map, so and and so you guys have a lot of pressure on you because the the like elementary age kids, the little tiny kids, they remember how to find Bosnia on a map. Oh, I was just at one of their houses the other night, so you know you're it's in Europe. And so, does anybody know what country is boot shaped? Oh, Italy. 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 All right. So when you see the boot, and if you think if the boot kicks backwards, a very cool soccer boot. Um, and then it will kick Bosnia. So that's that little reddish, purplish country you see right there. So just think, kick backwards if you're in Italy, and then you find Bosnia. So the next time that you really need to find Bosnia on a map, you never know when it'll happen, then you yep. know how to do it. Right. So, okay, so the next question. The major religion in Bosnia is Christianity, Buddhism, or Islam? So pick your color, any color. I think it's Buddhism. Actually, it's Islam. I thought it was Buddhism. Okay, so we're changing our mind. We're not, we're not going to go with Buddhism. We're going to go over. Yeah. Okay. You got a really in a group link, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Islam. 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 All right. Nice job. All right. Good job. Islam. Very nice. Does anybody know what the place of worship a church. is called for a Muslim? A church. Mosque. Very good. Never mind. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the building they worship in is called a mosque. And does anyone know what the top, the like, the mat hall thing is? Yeah. A tower. A no. No. It's called a minaret. And do you know why they have minarets? So they can yell and tell people it's time to pray. Well, they don't yell. They sing. sing. <laughs> they actually would say they teach. And so it's this type of chant. So yeah, so before they had loudspeakers, they'd go up there and they'd stand and they'd cup their hands. And for tourists, we still do it in the summer. Um, and they cup their hands and they give the call to prayer. How many times a day? Do I even know? Five, Five. Five. right? What? It's really nice at 430 in the morning when you're sleeping and you live beside um, so, especially with a loudspeaker. Is this the um, one next to where you live? No, this is in another town. Um, so yeah, so there it is. And that's why also the mosques were built very, very close. So in cu countries where they had Islam for a long time, then in the older parts of the city, they're really close together because once they couldn't hear, they called a prayer anymore, they had to build another mosque. So. There you go. There you go. All right, question three. How many Christians are in Bosnia? Five hundred, five thousand, five million. Five million. Five million. Five million. Five million. Five million. The world, can't be five million. I'm going to There's seven. This will be sexy. You guys try to pog in front of the camera. Yo, what up? Pog for the camera. Are you getting your own number there, Danielle? Oh, shit. Going yellow? All right. The answer is 
toothbrush to her. What was that same smell? Um, so anyway, but yeah, so those are your three things. You can try them. Those are like the stuff that Bosnians eat all the time. The Turkish delight is a big thing to give for holidays as a gift um, to people, boxes of it, but and it's got a little powdered sugar on it. But the Smokies, like Bosnian children are probably 50% made of Smokies. Because really? that's all they eat. Their bottom half is literally a smoky. <laughs> Interesting. Guys, we wanted to have Petula here because we support Petula as, a, as one of our missionaries. We think the mission is important to us. And so we just want to talk about something what God is doing, some interesting facts about just Bosnia and their culture, and help you guys get a broader understanding um, of the world. And Kind of God's God's call for us to be His ambassadors wherever we are, whether we're here, whether we're on vacation, or whether we're in another country in Europe. So um, I thought I'd start off. Um, listen up, you guys. Right? Um, I thought I'd start off with just asking, like, hey, what are some like cool, like Bosnian store to help us like understand? Yeah, so Bosnians are um, really big on family. And so when you become really close friends with them, um, they sort of, then they start to see you as their family. So one of the sort of interesting things with some people would think like hygiene wise, it's really gross. Uh, but for Bosnians, like you know that you're a part of the family when you go over to dinner with them and they don't give you a separate salad bowl anymore. So they just put the whole salad bowl in the center of the table and everybody takes their forks and we just eat out of the same bowl together. Not good in COVID age, but, um, but, but anyway, not really COVID friendly. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so that was sort of the way with some of my friends, I knew that they no longer thought of me as like their visitor because they stopped giving me my separate salad bowl and they would just then like let me eat with them out of the bowl which it, which it really freaks out a lot of americans when they see us all eating out of the same bowl but um but yeah so that's sort of they're just really into family and spending time with their family um and i always say that bosnians are not about the, the quality of time you spend with, with them but like the quantity so when they're growing up they make friends Usually when they're really small, who are from their building or from their neighborhood where they live, um, and eventually they may go to school and everything, but they stay friends with those people probably until the day they die. They have two or three friends that are their best, best, best friends, and they talk to them literally every day. And if they've gone like two days and not either texted back and forth or had coffee with them or talked to them, then there's like something seriously wrong with their relationship. You know, and they'll start to worry, are you mad at me? Or like, are you upset? So it's a really intense, friendship that they have with their with their friends so that can be a little bit hard for those of us who are americans or sort of use like i see my best friends like once a month you know especially when you're like working and things like that so it can be a little bit overwhelming but yet i would say that i really appreciate it now because i love having those friends who i mean they are in your business all the time they know everything about you uh, so when you're not feeling well like they immediately know because they know you so well because they've spent so much time with you and I'm curious, do you have like your one Bosnian friend? Like, I don't have one Bosnian friend, but I have like maybe three or four who are my really, really close friends. Like, well, there's one Bosnian family um, that I was their daughter's mentor, and um, so they actually call me their like the two her mom and her aunt call me their sister, like they're you know their sister from another mister type of thing, but um, <laughs> but I'm not really you know so they oh they like actually on Facebook. They put me that I'm their sister. Like, you know, when you yeah. put, can put like your relatives or whatever, um, they marked me as their sister. So, yeah. So, I, and then I have another like girlfriend that's, and then another guy whose sister moved to Canada because of the war, and, you know, and he just has his dad because his mom passed away um, when he was really young. And so I'm sort of his adopted sister. So now I'm like the auntie to his son, and, you know, and like his wife is like my sister in law. And so it's just a really cool relationship to have with people that you're that you're that much a part of their families and, and who they and the people they want to be with every day. So. And is this like a common so I don't want to explain some of this stuff up here. Okay, so this is like the regular you, like we didn't get to the question what is Bosnia's favorite drink, but it's coffee. Okay. That's hand down. We don't have to have a discussion about it. Um, and so and they drink Turkish coffee. So they make it in this coffee pot. So you grind the coffee like to a dust. It's like a powder. And then you boil the water and throw it in there, um, and then it settles to the bottom. You put it on the fire again until it comes up and makes like 
a foam on top, but you can't let it boil over because it makes a, it is a mess in your kitchen. Um, and all of us have made the mistake. So, and then you pour it in these little cups and you have to let it settle because of the, the sort of fine coffee that's in it. So you let your coffee sit for five minutes and then you start to drink it. So you just sip it. Um, and yeah, this is just like a sugar bowl that you can use, but they use a, do a lot of like what we call, this is called filigree work. So they do a lot of stuff that's really Middle Eastern looking. So even though it's a European country, one of the coolest things to me is it's this weird mix of like Eastern and Western culture. And we even have a spot on the street in Sarajevo where if you look one way on the street, it's like Western Europe. And if you look the other way on the street, it's like that you're in Turkey. So like you can stand there and they call it the meeting, that spot is called the, the place where culture meets. And so it's got a big compass on it, you know, and everything. And I used to stand there and tell people all the, all the time that that was the case and have them look left, left to look at the West or look one side to look at the West and look at the other side and look at the East. And then they put that there. So I really feel like someone heard me and I should get like a kickback because it, it, I thought of the idea of the meeting of the two cultures, but they never asked me. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's one of the cool things that I love about Bosnia is because it's so many different cultures and, and history in one like really small country and place. Yeah, no, I think that's interesting. Um, do they do the, I know in certain Eastern European countries they do like the dust and they like tell the fortune, cook the fortune based on like how the dust is sprinkled um, on the cup thing? We do either tea leaves or coffee grounds. Ah, yeah, so they okay. turn the cup upside down on the, on the little plate, you know, on the little saucer, and then they'll read your coffee grounds to tell you. I do not believe in any of this, but they're really, <laughs> some of them are really into it, so. Yeah, um, so I mean, Actually, you said you grew up in here in Indiana. Mm -hmm. well, what town? Um, a really small town of 600 whole people. Um, Monroe. It's up in northeast Indiana. Okay. Yeah, and so how does a girl from Monroe grow up and say, hey, I'm going to go to Bosnia? Like, how in the world did, we, did, did you get there? Well, one of the ways I got there is because my mom and dad are both, um, you know, they both follow Jesus and they both loved him. And so they actually had missionaries into our house all the time. The church that we were at always had lots of missionaries who came throughout the year and spoke. And so they would invite them to dinner at our house. And they had like really close friends who were missionaries. And my parents went on mission trips. And when we were we were in high school and, and like sort of middle school, junior high age, they took us on mission trips with them. And they took our like students on mission trips. So we were sort of surrounded by missions as we were growing up. So um, for me, it became a really normal thing to think about that as something I would do with my life later on. Um, and I always loved other cultures, and we even traveled a lot in the States, because my parents really wanted me to understand that the place we lived was not the only possibility for the way to live and what, what life was like. And so I feel like my parents sort of grew that into me, but also just from, from growing as a believer and learning more and more about what God's doing in the world, I just realized that that was something I really wanted to be a part of, because it seemed like that was what I was wired to do, and that would be something really cool for me. And he just led my steps, uh, step by step. And Eagle is a part of even how he got me um, tied really tightly into the Bosnian community here in Indianapolis, so. Yeah. And were you an only child, or did you have brothers and sisters? Um, I have a younger brother, and he's actually a pastor. He considered, okay. he and his wife considered being missionaries as well, but he's actually a pastor. They're actually a pastoral couple, so. So there you guys go. Your little siblings can turn out to be good people, too. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, another thing I wanted to ask her is kind of like, hey, what's what's God doing like right now in Bosnia? You're like your your just work over there. How have you seen God move? Well, I mean, it's a really hard place to do ministry because, like I said, you know, there's 500 Bible believing Christians and 3.5 million people in the country, and so it's unfortunately a country that's had a lot of pain and suffering for like not just a couple years, but for thousands of years. And, and sometimes people who were calling themselves Christians were the ones causing uh, the pain and suffering. And so um, there's a lot of like suspicion about outsiders and foreign people, but, but we really see God move in amazing ways, you know? And, and we've seen people, you know, really healed miraculously. We've seen uh, people who were sort of messing with like the dark side that you shouldn't be messing with and really deliver from that and, and have really new lives. I have friends who were, who were heroin addicts and they've been delivered of that addiction and live like lives for Christ now. So we've just seen God do amazing things and just transform people's lives 
where they may have been before filled with, they were depressed or they were filled with hate or they were filled with anger. And we just see God transforming them into new people. And so I think that that for me is one of the coolest things. And even the center that we run, though we wrote, don't have really people, it's not a Christian center and we don't do like outward evangelism there, but we're just building relationships with people through teaching English, through teaching their kids English, having art exhibits and a film seminar and all kinds of different sort of creative things that we do. And one of the cool things to me is that some of the people who come to English class say that they tell everybody it's their chief form of therapy. Because they said, when I come in this space, like it's so calm and peaceful, and it's not because we're playing like some kind of spa zen music or anything like that. I really believe it's because the Spirit of God is on that place because all of us who work there are believers. And I believe that those people feel Him like surrounding them with His love. And that's why, like if they have the worst day ever at work, they said, I can come for the whole night to go back home to my family. So I think that to me is one of the biggest testimonies that. Even though we can't see God working sometimes and we think, you know, am I really doing anything except for teaching English here? Then like one of my English students tells me that, that like the highlight of their week is coming to their English language class, which like language classes are not fun. So the fact that they feel that to me is just really a testimony that God is working yeah. and changing their lives in a way that they don't even realize yet. So oh, definitely. And you guys know like one of the reasons why we would have somebody like like Patrick come up here and talk to you guys is because like I said we think missions is really important. So one thing we're gonna you guys are gonna do in life groups is okay you guys have a little globe, right? You guys are gonna like spin it and I want you to like point at a country and I want you to look up a couple facts and then I want you to look up the percentage of believers in that country. Just so you guys kind of get this idea of what God is doing around the world and, and the needs around the world. Because there's a lot of countries like Bosnia where the numbers of believers are, I mean, what would it be, under, it means under 1%, right? In Bosnia? It's one-tenth of 1%. One okay, one-tenth. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I, I think, kind of just get this idea of what, hey, maybe what God has for you guys, you know, whether it's staying here, whether it's going someplace else, just like the being on mission, um, who God is. So, before we get into the, the final question I have for Petula, I want to open up to you guys. Is there anything that you're like, hey, I want to know this about Pet, uh, about Petula, about uh, Bosnia or Petula? Um, any questions you guys have? Bram? Why is Bosnia like on the map like has another name? Like it's Herzegovina? Ah the, the the famous question. Why is it Bosnia Herzegovina? So um, Bosnia is one region of the country that most people call Bosnia, and Herzegovina is another region. So when they actually put the full name of the country, it's actually Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, and the people who live in Herzegovina are really annoyed by the fact that most people call their country Bosnia because that's not the part of the country they live in. So, so it's just two different re regions. Uh, one is sort of the south and Mediterranean part of the country, and then we live in Bosnia, which is the sort of central and northern part that's more like a climate that's like here. It's really mountainous, but it's basically the same climate you have here. So there's sort of different areas as far as climate, but they're also just uh, geographically different areas. So. Does anyone go like Bos Hertz? Uh, no, they wouldn't go for that. So. No? no? They're not fun. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, Link, you had a question, dude? Uh, no. Okay, anyone else have a question? Sophie, what do you got? Do they have phones in Bosnia? Yes, they have smartphones, they have Wi Fi, you know. So they've got it all. It's really sort of interesting, though. We used to not have. Like maybe seven or eight years ago, like eight or nine years ago, we didn't really have smartphones and someone gave me a smartphone and so I was sort of, and it got stolen really quickly. Um, so, you said pickpocketing is a big thing. Yeah, pickpocketing yeah. is a big thing. But really interesting that I came home to America for one year and by the time I went back a year later, everybody had a smartphone. Mm -hmm. So like it was sort of a strange thing because like nobody had a smartphone and then everybody did. So now everybody has one. So. I don't even know that they get pickpocketed that much anymore because of the fact that everybody has one. So they'll, if they're stealing it, they're just selling it to sell to somebody. They used to steal it to like ask for themselves, but now they're actually just going to sell it probably. Yeah. Well, what do you got, dude? Well, what language do they speak? What language? They, well, that's a sort of a complicated question because we have three ethnic groups. So depending on which ethnic group you ask, they each would call the language something different. So if I'm of a Bosniak or Muslim background, I say I speak Bosnian. But if I'm a Serbian or Orthodox background, then I say that I speak Serbian. And if I'm a 
Croat or Catholic background than I say I speak Croat. So it's a little bit complicated. And if I'm from the country of Montenegro, I say I speak Montenegro. But when I go to their countries, like because those are also countries that neighbor us as well, but we have people from all those countries in our country. So when I go to a region that's mostly one ethnic group, when I speak, they'll say I speak whichever language they speak. So, and it's, it's a really big political thing that causes a lot of fighting. So actually, on bank, on bank machines, you know, like when you can pick which language you want to do the transaction in, like they just write local language because they don't even want to touch it with like a 10 foot pole. So they won't call it a name. They just say local language, so. Tristan, what you got, dude? Oh, it's frozen my hair. Oh, okay. Let's go. Anyone else got a question? Bram. Bram? How many language can you speak? Well, so technically, because I can speak Bosnian, I can speak four languages at one time. Jeez. At one time? Like, yeah. Just have a sentence of one word in English, one word in No, because of the imagine. fact that I can speak Bosnian, I also am speaking Serbian, Croatian, and Montenegro all at the same time. Ah. Little loophole there for you guys. Yeah. Uh, American English. And British English? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Alright, uh, one more question. Was that Danielle? Okay. Brian, we gotta get one more, buddy. Why did they design the fly like that? Oh, they did not. That's a really interesting question. And the question is they did not design a fly like that. Um, so, um, because of the fact that there was a war, and then Bosnia at the end of the war, to end the war, they actually didn't sign a peace treaty, they never have yet, 30 years later, they actually just have a ceasefire, um, but then they were like, okay, well you have to have a flag, because you're a new country, and they couldn't agree on what they would put on the flag, so actually the European Union just gave them this flag, because this is the colors of the European Union, and then the 13 stars represent uh, the 13 first states of the European Union, and so this is a flag that they never chose for themselves. So this is not the flag they designed. So they just got the flag. So. Does, does each ethnic group or like region have their own flag then? Well, two of the ethnic groups. Well, yeah, all three technically. Um, because like the people who are from Muslim backgrounds use the Muslim flag, which is like green with the half crescent moon and the star on it. Um, and then the, the Croats in Bosnia have a flag that's very similar to the Croatian flag. And then the Serbs in, in, in Bosnia actually just use the Serbian flag in their, in their part of the country. So we sometimes, in certain parts of our country, have flags of other countries flying, which is not something you're really supposed to do, um, unless you're like the UN. But, but so yeah, so it's a little bit of a weird thing. Yeah. So uh, I want to know, just for you guys and for you, Petula, um, what is some way that we can be like praying and helping? Well, um, I would definitely say just keep praying for more workers because like on my team there's only six people and you know the churches are really small, there's only 500 believers and and a lot of those people in the church are just sort of there and they're still growing in Christ so they don't really feel like they're ready to do like ministry and share their faith and, and it's a little scary because their families sometimes, um, you know, they basically throw them out of the house or out of the family when they choose to follow Jesus. So. Um, so just pray for the people who accept Christ, for the people who are even thinking about accepting Jesus, because it's a hard decision to make, because you you may be deciding to turn your back on your family. So yeah. I think just praying for that. Pray for people your age, because like there are people in Bosnia who are your age who accepted Jesus and want to follow him, and some of them, their parents won't let them do it, so they actually have to wait till they're 18 before they'll ever be able to come back to church. You know, So they went to a camp or something that we had in the summer, uh, I know one girl, she comes from a, another background, and she accepted Christ, and her parents said, no, you can't go to church on Sundays. So she's waiting till she's like 17 now, so she's waiting till she's 18, and then she's just going to tell them why I'm going anyway. And she said, maybe they'll throw me out of the house, it's okay, you know, I'll just figure something out. But um, yeah, so I think praying for people your age, or even high school students who want to follow Jesus, but they might be the only student in their whole high school that follows Jesus or their whole middle school, because nobody else is in there follows Jesus. So I think praying for them, that they'll, that God will give them strength and comfort and courage to speak about what they believe, because it's really hard. I mean, you guys know how it's hard. Um, so, so it's even harder for them, because they don't have anybody to back them up, you know? So 
I think praying for that and, and just praying that people will be open to hear about Jesus and, and to learn about how he can change their lives. Because sometimes they think they know who God is and they don't need you to tell them anything else. And so we want them to understand that they don't know the whole story about who God is and how much he loves them. So we want to share that, the rest of the story with them. I think that's one thing. Uh, like even when we talk about like evangelism or just sharing who Jesus is with our friends, I think at the end of the day we have to remember that it's God who one who's working behind right. us, you know, who is uh, empowering our speech, using the Holy Spirit to bring others to Himself. Um, and it's not our ability or inability; it's right. all based on God. So I think, yeah, just focusing on that, and I think that'll be good, good fuel of prayer. Pray for it. Um, so guys, I just wanted to pray perpetually here, and I think I hear worship ending. Grant, if you can go check on that for us, um, and we'll dismiss you guys. Uh, oh, okay. Thanks, Nikki. All right, um, let's pray, you guys. Um, dear God, Lord, I just thank you for, for what you're doing in the world. Um, God, uh, it's crazy that you use us as, as your people, as the church, to be the, the main agent of of reaching the nations. And God, I just want to pray for Petula and her team. Um, God, Lord, I, I do pray, Lord, that you would go before them, that you would bless the conversations that kind of even the way that she was describing those people who would come in, who they just feel something different about that place, that they would just be this understanding that the reason it's different is because God is here there. And God, I just pray over, um, over that area, over Bosnia um, in general. God, we'd love to see or that nation just come, like, start on fire for you. Um, so, God, I pray, Lord, you go before Patrick, go before her team. I pray, Lord, a blessing over her. Um, and, God, for us as students, God, I pray, Lord, that you would just give us a desire and a passion for others to see them come to know you, to know the peace that is found only in you, who you are. Um, and, God, don't let us settle for anything less than that. So, God, I pray you would be with us, use us, and bless us. In your name, amen.